All right, so I made it out of bed finally. <laughs> I don't seem to bounce back as quickly as I used to. Um, the hotel had a really good night's sleep. It's called Hung Gung. It's on Dong Da Street, I think it's called, and it's right near the market, not too far away. And it doesn't have a restaurant, so they deliver your breakfast to the door. So I needed to be up fairly early because I, I think I said I'd wanted it around about 6.30 or something like that. And sure enough, they delivered it to my room and I just had a bun mi opla and a coffee. So this is actually my second coffee here at this place. It's called Bokke Coffee and Beer. And Bokke means riverbank in Vietnamese, and um, which is quite apt because the, the river that separates Vietnam and Cambodia is just over there, really. And it's in a beautiful French colonial era style building, and it's probably one of the more beautiful buildings in town. But having said that, Chao Dop has really impressed me. It's a beautiful little town. It's well laid out. It looks really clean, although across from here there's a sort of a rubbish pickup. But anyway, it doesn't seem to be an issue. It's not an issue for me. And it's lovely. The people are lovely and it's got a great little vibe about it. I'm definitely going to come back at some stage. I'll pack the bike up again and perhaps come straight from Ho Chi Minh City because today I've got the big ride back home. It's about 200 kilometres, I think, and as you know, um, I'm not really an enduro rider these days so hopefully along the way there's some nice little spots to stop and take a break but I don't expect to get back into Saigon until at least six o'clock tonight because I actually still want to go around a little bit um, the hotel they've also given me an electric bike to get around on so you know first time ever riding an electric bike and it's awesome so I plan to go around on the, on the bicycle this morning, maybe for another hour, do a little bit of filming, catch some of the ma uh, major sites, and then hit the road at some stage, probably around about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning. Yesterday, it was a little bit easier than I thought. So I left Triton about 11 o'clock, I think it was, and I was expecting a much more difficult trip but I got to Nui Gam, which is just outside of Triton, pretty quickly. It's only about 10 kilometers out of town, I think. And true to its name, Gam in Vietnamese means prohibited, not allowed. And the mountain is named, you know, prohibited mountain or something like that. And true to its name, I wasn't allowed to drive up there by myself. They say it's too dangerous. And what you need to do is hire one of the motorbike guys that roar up and down the mountain throughout the day. I, I didn't ask how much it was because I, I didn't plan on doing it and because I had all of my equipment I didn't want to leave that down the mountain while I was up there taking a look. Allegedly it's very beautiful because you can look out over the, the Mekong Delta Plain. So that'll be next time. I think next time when I stay in Triton, I'll leave my gear at the hotel and then just make the short trip out to the mountain. The other option to get up the top is to take a cable car. <laughs> I've got a couple of curious onlookers here. You can take a cable car. There's actually a cable car up to the top of the mountain and you can do that. But again, it was gonna to be too troublesome for me with all my gear and all that. So that's another reason for me to come back. I highly recommend Triton, by the way, if I haven't said that already. Now the, the drive out of Triton for the first 30 minutes or so is pretty rough because they're doing road works there. Not too bad, easy enough. I don't know what it'd be like when it's raining might be a little bit tricky but just keep that in mind if you're doing it soon because it looks like those roadworks won't be finished for a while yet and then eventually I got onto some nice highway and if you go direct from Triton to Chaldop I don't think it would take too long I actually turned off the main highway and shout out to Vietnam Coracle because he pointed this out on his map to turn left at a particular point and it takes you through 
local farmland communities, which is really interesting. Now, I don't have any footage of that because mostly, well, yeah, mostly because I'm stupid. I only brought one smart card for my Osmo. And so I've filled that up already. I've got a full card on that and I don't have a backup with me except for this one and it was just going to be a little bit too difficult to pull it out. I didn't know how far I was going to going to be how long it was going to take me to get to to Chaldop. Anyway, it was very nice nice drive and then I turned on to I'm on a very loud corner here. I hope this mic's working properly. I turned onto a road that was uh, getting repaired and anyone who's driven in Vietnam will be able to empathise with me because as soon as you see roadworks in Vietnam you start to wonder how long this is going to go for because there's usually no signs and nobody's telling you where to go, you just have to follow the person in front of you. Fortunately, on the map, it, it told me that that particular stretch wasn't too long before I hit the main highway to Joldob. And as it happened, it was fine. It, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of that kind of bumpy, dusty, it was super hot at the time. And then a storm came in. A storm came in and saturated me. It just came over the hill, appeared out of nowhere, whipped up this wind and, and heavy rain and I got drenched in about one minute but um, I kept going and I wasn't too far from Chaldop as it turns out and here I am. Highly recommend it. Very good so far. One of the key things that I've noticed about this trip around and again a shout out to Vietnam Coracle. If you're thinking about doing a motorbike trip or even a bicycle trip He's the man in Vietnam for, for these kind of routes and things. He's, he's been to every province in Vietnam and he's documented it all. Vietnamcoracle.com And yeah, this is where I got my idea to, to do this particular loop. I've, I've gone a few other different ways along the way just to suss out little communities and stuff like that but by and large I've followed his recommended route and it's a ripper it's excellent just about every day I've seen something different in terms of geography people towns all the towns aren't the same sometimes it's easy to to think that all the towns are, same, are the same in Vietnam and all the highways are the same in Vietnam. They're busy and crowded. This isn't the case on this particular one. And we're leading up to a public holiday. Hopefully I get home today before all the traffic, but at least it probably will be coming the other way, hopefully. But yeah, check it out, vietnamcoracle.com. Amazing. Thanks, Tom, for your advice and, and your amazing content for this kind of stuff. So definitely check him out. This morning, yeah, I'm going to head back to Saigon. I would love to stay here for another night at least. I think from what I've seen so far, I, I drove around town last night on the electric bike. And from what I've seen, it's worth at least giving it two nights. I think in future I'm going to come back, perhaps give it three nights. And there are some floating communities just across the river, just across from the Victoria Hotel, not too far from here. And I'd be pretty keen to pay a local guy just to take me across the river in a boat and suss out the community there and, and spend half a day just you know, meeting the locals, chatting to the locals and seeing how they live on the water. They're like a, just a floating pontoon really with a shed on it. And I'm assuming they're fisher people and just live on the water. So yeah, there's a lot of things. There's also a little bit of history here. Well, quite a lot of history in terms of war history as well that I really need to read up on. Uh, thanks MC Shang on Instagram. He engages with me quite a bit online and thank you for all your information make sure you check him out as well he gets around the Mekong quite a bit during his free time so check out his Instagram I think it's MC underscore Shang 
I'm not too sure. I'll, I'll check that. I'll put it in the description anyway. So you can uh, click on his link and follow him on Instagram. Well worth it. So yeah, that's about it. I'm just going to go around the markets again. Um, have a look through the streets again in daylight, proper daylight. Check the town out. Pack up my bags and um, hit the road, which I'm not really looking forward to. And it, Obviously, I'm very keen to see my wife again after you know, five days, but I also would love to stay longer. I think, I think the entire trip, I'll, I'll do a recap video anyway about this trip when I get home, when I've had time to think about it and digest it so that I'm not rambling on too much like this. This is already my second coffee as well, so <laughs> I'll make sure I don't have too much coffee, but it's a trip that probably deserves seven days, I would say. Um, but I'll let you know after the drive back from Saigon. I don't really know necessarily what's along there in terms of places to stay just in case I get stuck or tired or whatever because I've had a good solid four, four and a half days on the motorbike already and I'm pretty keen to see a sofa, to be honest, so, and that'll be tonight. And my own bed. Okay, I'm gonna finish off this coffee. It's a great coffee, by the way. Um, they also sell it. They, they have beans there for sale, so I think I'll pick up a bag and take it home, and that can be my, my gift for my wife. What do you think about that? <laughs>